Hi, people, hand players. Good uh, Super Bowl Friday to you. Saturday, no, it's Sunday. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just so excited because Kansas City's in that I'm just I'm a little bit uh, off today. But welcome to the live stream lessons, and uh, I'm honored to have my my daughter, my good friend Jamie, with us all the way from North Carolina, wearing her uh, Kansas City uh, gear, and uh, she has a special connection to Kansas City. And I'll let her just tell you about that. Run it back, Chiefs! Oh my gosh! So playing on the drum line, uh, the Rumble drum line, which uh, the Kansas City Chiefs have play at every home game for three years, is one of my most special memories. I have so many good friends from that drum line, and it was such a blast. I I didn't even know that NFL teams had drum lines. I had never been to an NFL game before. Uh, I had only been to the Chiefs stadium once <laughs> because. Uh, K-State and uh, Iowa State played each other there every year. Farmageddon, we called it. So that's Midwest for you. But uh, yeah, I, ha I got the chance when I was student teaching in Kansas City to uh, join the drumline. I played cymbals the first year, which was a blast um, and heavy. And I got a lot of bruises. But then I switched to my, uh, my actual instrument, which was bass drum. And I played that for two seasons. And I... It was so fun. I The roar of the crowd, the lights, the adrenaline, it is scary to run out in front of that many people and play your drum and try to remember all the notes and the moves. But man, so fun. And I also did, you know, other drum lines, but Kansas City is my first love and we got to run it back. We're going to win. I can feel it. Tonight is our night. Second year in a row. I'm, I'm pumped. I had a good time watching you. We used to go up and watch her play. And I got to actually go into the stadium uh, during a rehearsal, which was uh, a dream because I'm an old Chiefs fan from way back. And let me just face it, I'm an old fan. And I'm a fan of the Chiefs also. So <laughs> lots of fun. Um, down to some business. I want to encourage you to, if you haven't Wait, already, to download. Wait, I forgot. Pardon? I'm sorry. This Wait. is very important to me. I'm sorry. Also, I made some cupcakes and put them in oh. a shape of an arrowhead. Everybody should know. Well, yes. I mean, if you haven't ever had... Cupcakes in the shape of an arrowhead. That's really cool. I mean, come on. That's I'm sorry. Cool. Okay. All right. Go and ahead. Certainly was <laughs> worth the interruption. Uh, if you haven't yet, please go to uh, bradshoresmusic.com to download this week's music. And it's a minor detail. That's an, actually the name of the song. It's an original I wrote this week, uh, featuring the A minor scale. That's why it's called the A minor detail. And that. Uh, site bradshoresmusic.com you can also go to the steel drum page or the tab and you can see where you can download that and if you can leave a donation for us that's terrific uh, we're making a uh, donation to the uh, food pantry of Oklahoma City this week part of our donations will go there you can Venmo, PayPal send an Eskimo dog you know with, with <laughs> some sort of I don't know something that would be terrific I also want to let you know that uh, the live streams will be on YouTube um, they won't be live, of course, after today, but that music is going to come down uh, every week. So we would encourage you to get it while it's, you know, for a donation. Or later on, if you want to go to uh, tropicalshores.net, it'll be for sale on my website. So it's kind of confusing, but hopefully you'll understand. We'll take the music down uh, after that week. We'll let people have it for a donation for a week, and then we'll move it to the to the other the e-commerce site. So, so for example... So just to clarify, so let me get this straight. So if I'm watching now and I want to get a minor detail, meaning the piece of music, then I have a week from today. So all of this week, it's going to be uh, just available for a donation. And then starting next, like when the next song is on live, that means it's gone and you need to go uh, to tropicalshores.net to get it, right? That's correct. That's correct. Good. I'm glad you cleared that up on me. If the Chiefs lose well, today, the whole deal's off. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, everybody just, no, no, just, no more. No, no more. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a good start. And um, with that, hopefully you've had time to download it. You've got it in front of you. I'm going to play it through one time, not the whole time. I just want to give you the flavor of it. And it's it's uh, it's got a couple of repetition licks in it. We're going to talk a little bit about some licks that will work in this. But for now, we'll just play it through once. Thank you. 
there just to sort of whet your appetite a little bit. Um, let's talk about the roadmap of this song. When you go to the lead sheet, you'll see that it's in A minor. Well, how do I know it's in A minor? We talked about last week that you have to look at the key signature. And the key signature on this one, you say, well, it doesn't exist. There is no key signature. Jamie, what's the deal with that? Why is there no key signature? You're muted there, Jill. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, that's just, isn't that just how it is in 2020 and yeah. 2021? If I had a nickel for every time some kid in one of my classes said, Miss Shores, you're muted. And then I always unmute and say, you're muted. <laughs> and then I'm sassy. Okay. No, <laughs> Sorry. That means that the scale that you are going to use is one of two things, C major, or it's relative minor scale, which is from A to A instead of C to C, but you play all the same notes, but you just start on A. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of that, but we know instead of, and we know that because you see a lot of A's, the tune starts with a and you end up on a a lot and so you know that's kind of the tonic or the the landing uh landing note for this it's a clue isn't it it's a clue that maybe it's an a minor and not c major yes mm -hmm. if it sounds uh if it doesn't sound major which again that would be something you would you would study but yeah this sounds kind of uh sounds a little bluesy it doesn't sound super uh you know as i teach my little ones like does this sound very happy and bright no this is kind of like laid back and a little bit bluesy so we think it might be in in the relative minor which is yeah. a minor now the other thing is when you look at the key signature you don't see flats or sharps i used to tell my little kids like third and up i'd say it's clean and clear and nothing there that means c clean and clear and nothing there that's one thing that will help you um now the form of the song is kind of the kind of what's what uh, how it's built. It's built in. Uh, you have this part where it goes at the beginning. I saw that Inspector Gadget click there, and then at main. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> it does it all over again, and then you go into a different part of the song, which is major twenty-five, what I would call the B section, or maybe the bridge. That that's another word for that. So it's an A A B form. It's the first part. The, the, then the first part again, kind of, and then the, the bridge is the B section. Then you just repeat, and on the repeat, you can play harmony with it, you can play it again. If you're at a pool party and nobody's really listening, it's a great time to improv because if you're scared of improv, it's a great time to try that because nobody's really listening. And, and they're pretty enamored with the field anyway, and you get a lot of, you get a lot of credit for that. So, um, Jamie, what are some licks that we could use in this song that you, you've come up with? I don't like to give people like, here's a lick. I'm going to give you something that I do to get cool licks. So something that I have found that works really well is if you come at a note, like add a little grace note to some notes. Let me demonstrate. It's easier to hear. So if, if I'm going to play the first little lick, right, I'm going to, I'm going to add a note to the E at the top and I'm going to play E flat which is a half step down. And I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna jazz it up a little, a little bit. And that's a really easy way to add just a little bit. You don't have to do all these crazy Brad Shores. You don't have to noodle to have cool licks, okay? So think about that. Thinking about finding, I usually do it at, uh, on the highest note. Come up to the highest note from a half step down. If you don't know what the half step down is, Google it. it. It's on the internet. But if you do, then that'd be F to E coming up from E flat. Right? Back to yeah, you, Dad. I, I like the trainees. They say a uh, flick. That's a flick. They play a little bit under that note. They flick it. Oh. And uh, mm. yeah, I like that. Like what you're really telling them also is you're playing the melody, you're just augmenting it a little bit or jazzing up, like you said. And uh, that's a great way to think of that. Now, I do have a Brad Shores lick. So we're going to go to the whiteboard. <laughs> I, I think right. you meant that was a compliment, yes. I'm, I'm hoping. Over here at the whiteboard, I, did, yes. I wrote out this little lick that I like, and it is uh, A, C, D, E flat, B, C, A. So it sort of, sort of goes up and comes down in the same notes. And the reason I like that, this is a cool lick note, because you get all these cool licks. We're going to use repetition, and we use something called a hemiola. 
And no, that's not a medical term, although there is something similar to that. Uh, the Was it hematoma? What? Hematoma. Hematoma, right. So That's the word, yeah. These are the notes that I talked about. A, C, D, E flat, B, up and down, same note. Now, if you can play that, sorry. Now, a couple things that I'm going to tell you. If you want to play it fast like that, play low. Don't play high. It won't work. Stay low. It's more good. Uh, just really low. I'm very low on the pan. So, if I play that lick, um, let me just, I don't know, see. I played that lick, that little mountain of lick, I played it three times in the, in the, in the span of, of four beats. And we call that uh, a hematoma, which is basically <laughs> a hemioma. Sorry. Gotcha. Yeah, he, thanks a lot, Jamie, for telling me that. Uh, <laughs> that is a great lick. I used repetition because I kept playing that lick. And I did it in a, uh, in a I'm just going to play it for you, but that's a cool lick. I'm just going to play just a little bit of that. It won't, won't be long. <laughs> Almost sextuplets. Almost, almost like they're not quite, but you're you're yeah. If if you're a rhythm person or you're, uh, you know, a practiced percussionist or anything, they're they're about sixteen uh, six sextuplets. And I also did another what I would call a Jamie Shore lick, which is only two notes. So to her point, you don't always have to have a ton of notes. Sometimes, well, you know, uh, Duke Ellington, Count Basie. Count Basie was a jazz pianist. But he was known for playing hardly anything because the notes he played were hardly anything. It's what he played which made it cool. It wasn't how much it was. It was just the right notes at the right time. And so. Right. That's me, the that's a common mistake when you're learning to improv is to play too much. As we, you know, as I uh, work with students to to work in jazz bands as um uh, I'm not doing that right now, but I have been in the past, and that's the comp mistake. They fill every single second with notes, and we teach them and coach them, take a breath every once in a while. It doesn't have to be complicated. It often is based in repetition, as I think, I think I've said the word repetition on these live lessons about 17 million times, because that's the truth. Find a cool lick and repeat it. Find those two notes and repeat it. Then wait a second, then start the next thing. Yeah. Uh Marsha was pointing out a mistake on there, and yes, there's a couple of. I was in a big hurry writing this one. If you don't, if you don't remember, I was wanting to do Afro Cuba, but I chose to do this one. I have a, a friend write in saying I want to, I want to do something on the blues scale, on many blues. So I wrote the song, and uh, there's a couple of missed letters, but I didn't, I didn't want to correct it because it was just a minor detail, Marsha. So I didn't change it. I'm sorry. That's uh, I'm, I won't say any more about that. Uh, so. On the theory sheet, if you have that theory sheet in front of you, I tried to lay out some of these uh, chords. Of course, the one that we know of the best there is the A minor chord. And I just wanted to show you what an inversion was. And the reason those are important is because they make good improv licks. The first chord is A minor, A, C, E. The next major is E, A, C. It's the same group of, of notes, you just stack them differently. The first note is called the first inversion. I took uh, the A and I put it on top. No, that's the second inversion. Oh, God, I made another mistake. I was really in a big hurry. Uh, huh, boy. Okay, well, go to major uh, six, seven, five, six, eight. You receive the G inversion. You have the first inversion, or I put the G, it was GBD. I put the G on the top instead of the bottom. That's what an inversion is. It's the same notes, you stack them differently. And then, of course, I put the A minor scale on there at bar 13, just up and down. Then I put a different kind of scale after that on major 17. And this is the a minor harmonic. It's a slightly altered on the seventh tone. When I play that for students, they go, oh, that sounds like a, an Egyptian scale. I don't know why they do that, but they do. The one after that uh, is major 21. It's the blues scale written out for you. And you can come back down, of course. So those are our song. Those are chord tones that you can use in your improvisation and also uh, scales that can be used. So 
Uh, yeah, that's let's see if we're looking at the questions. I will fix the music online. Yes, I will. I probably won't do it today. I'm going to be busy watching the Chiefs win, but I'm going to get to it. So, mm -hmm. uh, oh, Kathy. Well, Kathy. yeah. Sorry, Kathy. It, she says you know go Bucks. I have a, I have a heart for the Bucks because uh, they were one of the first expansion teams back in the well, a long time ago. The Bucks and the Seahawks, I think, were the first two expansion teams, and they have Tom Brady playing for them. You know, the guy's 43. God bless him. You know, <laughs> I'm I wish I could have been playing football. Honestly. He's pretty. I was playing. Pretty good. What's an expansion team? Well, there used to only be twenty. What's an expansion teams. team? There only used to be twenty-six oh, teams, and uh, then they said, "Hey, we're going to have more teams." So they said, "Let's have the Buccaneers and the Seahawks." I could be wrong on that. I know the Buccaneers won. I could be wrong on the Seahawks. Somebody correct me. But uh, I, I tell you what, Kathy, we would trade your your weather in Kansas. We will trade you today or and all week because we're not even supposed to get over twenty. So. Oh. Bless your hearts. Yes. All right. All right. Good stuff there. Um, uh, let's see. Going to hear oh. from Bobble. Oh. Bobble Brad. Yes, Bobble Brad's time. I almost went by it. Bobble Brad's uh, thing today is DS Alcoda. And these are things, this phrase is a roadmap uh, phrase. It's, it's, it's a thing that's saying, if you're always driving, it would say, take the detour, get off on Highway 5. It's, it's a way to tell you where to go on the music. And what it signifies, if I can go to the board over here, is it's saying uh, DS stands for del segno, which is uh, either Latin or I'm not sure, Italian maybe. Uh, that's the word for that segno means sign. So go to the sign. Actually, it says, uh, I don't know whether you knew this, Jamie, I just learned this today. Uh, DS means from the sign. It means from the sign, not go to the sign. I thought that was interesting. Anyway, Go back to the sign, but it actually means from the sign until you see uh, the word to coda, and then you go to this sign, which is the coda sign. Now, a lot of people get those mixed up. This one looks like an S to me. In fact, it probably is, and that's the way I remember sign, senio. But uh, the sign is just a way to um, to make the music um, shorter. They don't have to write it out again. Now, on, on uh, this song called A Minor Detail, there is no sign, and I, I think there's just... Uh, there's just first and second inning, so you don't really have it. But I thought people have asked me that before. Um, so Bobble Brad, he's uh, he's really on top of that one. He he studies these all week and then he feeds us the information. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, gig tips. Now we gotta have a couple gig tips. I let me. You guys start. Off okay. One. Let me start with one. Uh, I learned. Okay, go ahead. Time ago at the gig, and I don't know whether everybody's a, a gigger, but. Um, one thing that I like to do is make sure that they put you in the shade because I've had people go, you're going to be in the middle of the soccer field and will that be okay? It's only 110, you'll be fine. No, it's not fine. <laughs> we need uh, to have shade because everybody knows that the, the sun will temporarily put your pan out of tune. And plus, you know, it's, it's hot out. So I always put that in my contract. Not that I'm a contract and stick to everything in there, but that's one thing you say, This I have to have shade because of the safety to the instrument. So. Jamie, what do you got for us? Speaking of contracts and things to put put in them, you you do need to put that because if they say, oh yeah, sure, and then you show up and there's no shade, you need to be able to say, no, I I said it in the contract and you signed it and it, you'll, you'll provide me because I don't carry a, a gigantic umbrella. I, I've seen some hand players that that carry a giant gigantic umbrella with them to, to gigs, but I don't do that. I have a Honda Accord. Uh, my gig tip is this, put the time that you will arrive on the contract because I've gotten some phone calls, some frantic phone calls from people who for some reason thought I should show up two hours before I play. But since it's just me setting up a small, a small, uh, you know, setup, I only need to be there about 30 minutes. That's how long I'm comfortable uh, setting up. And then I have about 10 or so minutes to, to get myself set and ready and tested. And 30 minutes is plenty. So on my contract, I say, uh, player will arrive 30 minutes before contracted start time. So they know when to expect me. That's so, and then point. if you're running late, make sure you have their cell phone number. <laughs> That's interesting because when you were in the family band and in your youth, uh, they were like, oh, why are you going to leave so early? And I go, well, I want to get there in time to, to set up so they don't think I'm not showing up. So, I don't know. Ignorance is young, isn't it? It's just, it's, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't realize I wasn't, I didn't, I'm sorry. I will say that. I will say I'm sorry uh -huh. about that. Thank you. 
<laughs> These are good for something. You're getting the apologies yeah, that are long, that. long ago. <laughs> we, we had some amazing gigs together. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I also want to, I was kind of coming through my mind, I want to encourage you to ask questions if you have questions or uh, let us know you're here, say hi. Um, I also want to talk to you about the uh, some of the theory that's going on in this song and a way to do something else but do the, uh, to get away from doing the melody on your improv, you can do always chord tones, like the first chord tone is A minor. And then the next chord tone is D minor, D of A. That's a great way to do, uh, uh, to learn other things. And now is when the inversions come in. So I have A, C, E, or E, uh, sorry, C, E, A. Same group of notes, I just stack them differently, or I play them in different orders. Here's D, F, A. Now here's F, A, D. Here's A, D, F. It's the same three notes, I use different order. I play one before the other. And then we need to talk about that E7 chord. Uh, the E7 chord is E, G sharp, B, and D. That's one, three, five, and seven. If you, if you use one as, if you use three, sorry, if you use E as one, you have one, three, five, seven. That's why it's an E7 chord, because you stack it like that. And that, that's generally uh, a good way to, uh, to play stuff that isn't a melody. Now, if you go down to major 25 where the bridge starts, you have an F chord. F A C, and then G B D, and then A C E. So I want to demonstrate that just for a minute, doing those sorts of things. There's the F chord, G chord, A minor, F A C, G B D, A C E, E G sharp E. by the pool and you heard somebody doing it, you would probably not realize that they're just practicing their little arpeggios or their little um, chord tones. You might just go, that's pretty good. Now you notice I didn't just play them like this. I put a little rhythm behind them and yes, that's going to take some uh, uh, ex exploration in rhythm and things like that. Um, would you agree, Jamie, that's a good way to do that? I was going to say there's a couple things that uh, maybe people don't know, such as what typically I think that most musicians do is play the head once, meaning the melody. That's what some musicians, especially jazz musicians, call the melody is the head. Play the head down once. On the second time, do a little improv. Maybe the second time you just use chord tones with that rhythm that you just talked about. The third time down, do a little bit more improv. And the last time, I think this one's got four, four times through the head. The last time, make sure to end with the head. So always start and end with the melody. And you don't have to do it that way, but uh, that's a good way to kind of mix it up for the listener. Um, and so, you know, if you just play the melody uh, four times, that can get a little bit repetitious, which isn't always great, except when you're improving. Right. Uh, there's a question from Frank, and he's wanting to know if I sell the, the adjustable stand. Um, and depending on, uh, gosh, tuning in Maryland, that can't be that hard. But let me, let me start with the adjustable stand. I think I got this um, at Lone Star Percussion, and they're out of Texas. So I think they're in Denton, which is Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Check there first. I don't sell stands at all. Um, and probably it's going to be... 172 to $200, but I really, really like the adjustable stand. And you have adjustments here on the side, and then, of course, it's sort of like a cymbal stand with, with this uh, mm -hmm. thing on top. Do you have the same one I have, Dad? I do, because I bought you one also. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Lone Star Online, Lone Star Percussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah. No, I, I, and you know, there are other kinds that, are, that I can uh, recommend, and I got mine from Gil's Pan Shop. Uh, and he's in Trinidad, but they, they ship to the U.S. and uh, probably I think it's about eighty or ninety dollars, or not. They're a little bit more. You can take take them apart more. They're more take apartable. What is that? They're you know 
what's that word? You take them apart. Break break down. You could break, break them down. down. I don't, what? Okay. How are we musicians that we don't know the words They're for these pieces. things? There are more pieces. Thank you. So yeah, this is my favorite though. This stand that we have is my favorite. I don't know how far, uh, but Jamie, do you know anybody who tunes out in Maryland? I can't think of anybody, but I don't know everybody. If anybody does, maybe some of our people. Oh. How far is Maryland from Steve Laurie? Uh, Steve is in, I thought he was in Wisconsin. He's a Midwestern guy. No, he's in Ohio. Oh. He's in Ohio. How far is Ohio uh, from two Maryland? States, I think. Is Ohio. Two yeah. states? I mean, he was, in, he was from Ohio and he came to Wisconsin. I mean, he takes his little camper and he just goes. You might try he, Steve. I don't he's know. a great tuner. And his uh, website is pantuner.com. He also sells great mallets. And he's a, just an incredibly mm -hmm. interesting person, a great tuner. And he does little tours. He came by Kansas. That's how I got old. Otherwise, I'd be mm -hmm. driving uh, to uh, Austin, which is uh, two states away. So, uh, yeah, everybody, <laughs> Marcia, everybody looking for a great tuner. That's, that's super. You know, if you, uh, if you Google tuners, you know who would be really great to ask is, is, talk, is ask uh, Steve, and it's pantuner.com. Ask him, uh, are you available? Do you, do you travel or do you know somebody? Because maybe he can recommend. I, I'm just, I always just use whoever happens to wander through Kansas sometimes. Uh, I use Chris. Yeah, Walker. and they all know each other, I feel. Yeah, they all yeah. kind of, it's a small network of people. So that's a great, and now that I've moved to a different state, um, who, uh, yeah, Marsha in Tennessee, I'm closer to you now. So I need to find find somebody close. Uh, I just had mine done last year. Um, so I typically try to do once every one to two years. I didn't play very much this year, so I could probably go another year. So. My friend Bruce asked me, how often should I have my pan tuned? And I say, well, how often do you play your pan? And he says, every day. If you're playing every day, and if you haven't dropped it or anything, I would say that you, uh, I like to get it tuned once a year, but I play a mm -hmm. lot and, and I have kids play online at school. So uh, a lot mm -hmm. of that, so. Great question. Thank you for your questions. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, the internet's a, it's a great thing. Um, so where are we at? We are, yeah, we need to do that play along. But first I wanted to remind you of a couple things. There's just some business that we have to take care of. One is that uh, I know a lot of you go to bradshortmusic.com and the steel drum site on that uh, steel drum page or what's that called tab uh, to get the music. We decided we're going to uh, take down music a week after it's been uh, used. So it's going to be available at chopapplesource.net, but that's an e-commerce site. It's a little bit different, and you can buy it there. You can get it for donation or nothing at bradshoresmusic.com, but only for a week. Although the, the live streams are going to, you can see the live streams for uh, you know weeks after that. You just won't be able to get that music. So we're going to try to make that clear. It's We're still learning. And uh, by the way, I wanted to ask uh, our, our people that are watching, what's our sound like because we have a trouble uh we have jamie's on zoom and we're, what does it sound like are we can you hear us it should be louder do you hear any echoes do you have any bird sounds anything anybody but marcia how about marcia i'm going to call you out marcia let us know okay she's she's working there all right and then uh i want to uh encourage you to come back next week we're going to be doing another song i'm not sure what song it's going to be yet uh can hear me less. Might be well. a special somebody's birthday. I don't know. Oh, Could be. Gosh. It's Valentine's Day, so maybe we should do a love song, Dad. Is it already Valentine's Day? Yeah, my birthday's on Valentine's Day. Or did you forget? Jamie, I didn't tell him. Jamie is a Valentine's baby. Thank <laughs> you, Mary, for telling us that. Uh, she's a Valentine's baby, and every year it's the same. Every year it's the same day. I don't know how that happened. It's good planning on my part. Uh, so maybe we should do a love song. If anybody has anything. Uh, I shouldn't ask that, but if, in, if, if there's anything I could do, I might do a love song. I can't guarantee I'll have time to, to build a new one, but uh, yeah, okay. I need. We could do something out. like, you know, somebody, something classic, like can't help falling in love or something, you know, people already know, or that's simple. Yeah, or that's are you okay? What do you, I don't know. Just I an know. idea. I love, I love that tune, but we might it's not my one. show. So. Um, can't <laughs> help falling in love is a good one. I'm a little bit too loud, but I'm working on it. Too loud. I'm working on it. Okay, that's good to know. Oh, uh, Karen is on from the uh, from the UK. Thank you for, for watching. Appreciate that. Must be like 1.30 in the morning there or something. Probably. I was gonna say, what time is it there? <laughs> it's probably 11.30 or something. Maybe maybe she can tell us. Let's see. Um, all right. Well, 
we're going to do a playthrough and this time i'm going to play twice through. i'm going to play that as jamie said, i'm going to play the head down once which is the um which is the melody and then i'm going to do some improvs and i might i think the song goes three times through and it might be four i i did it this week and i wasn't really sure uh annette says good to see you annette or uh, jamie your pan has a lot of it, a lot of static and i think they're saying it may be too loud i'm not sure but we're learning we're, we're working on it okay and um Oh, it's 10.30. That's not that bad. Karen says it's 10.30. All right. Well, this is the 10.30 song. And if you would like, play along. Uh, you can do your own improv. Uh, but I'm going to play the entire head once. I'll probably just go back and repeat one time through. And so I'll play some licks that maybe you can copy, go back and look at them. I can't do them slow, but, but maybe you can get them. So I like I like playing those licks and I like playing in this key. It's so easy because you're just playing really in in, uh, in A minor. So uh, we're gonna we're having some technical difficulties. So Jamie, are you still with us? Okay. All right. Well, we enjoyed having everybody. Yes, here. I'm here. Oh. And we we've been having trouble with this with the uh, video on this, but we want to thank everybody for uh, for coming in and uh, Jamie parting things happy practicing Ooh, that's how i've been ending all my student uh, my student videos no uh yeah thank you for uh saying that you're here and it's great to to interact with other pan players and and we hope you continue to come in and give us 
give us your feedback and uh, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it's very helpful uh, when you guys give us feedback about sound. It's just, you know, there's a lot that goes on with this. And I want to thank uh, Miss Congeniality, who's our producer, and uh, just for keeping things going. Andrea, thank you for showing up again, and, and uh, good to see you. And I uh, just want to thank everybody else for, for coming in and, and, uh, and being part of it. We invite you to come back next week. Now, we're going to go back to 5, uh, the Live at 5, uh, at uh, Central Standard Time, Live at 5. And, of course, for people on the East Coast, they say we're, we'll be in the mix in 6 or at 6. So that's terrific. What about in the U.K.? That would be like Wait. 11. Uh, 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 11 at 11. I don't know. 11. It's 11. It's okay, though. Trying to stay in the U.K. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, a couple other people. Um, uh, Ellen, good to see you. I'm glad you liked it. And Marsha, thank you. And Annette. And uh, Linda Bowie, good friend. Remember, you remember Linda from uh, West Virginia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Church, yeah, that's right. Okay. Hey, Linda. All right. Well, we will see you all again next week, hopefully. And I hope you have a good week. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Jenny, thank you. This is what happened. Oh.